السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. نحمده ونصلي على رسول النبي الكريم. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. الحمد لله رب العالمين. الرحمن الرحيم. مالك يوم الدين. إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين. إحدنا السراط المستقيم. سراط الذين أنعمد عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين قال الله تعالى في شان حبيبي إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا سلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم بارك على سيدنا ولانا محمد تبدي القلوب ودوائها وعافية الأبدان وشفائها ونور الأبسار وديائها وعلى آله وصحبه دائما أبدا سلاة وسلاما عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله سم الله عليه وسلم ربي النور ربي الأول مبارك لأريوان uh, today is the sixth of this month of Rabiul Awwal. And if we look at the month historically, you know, if you look at you know, the various months in the Islamic calendar, and actually this was the Arab calendar before Islam even. So the months were, were the same. Uh, you know, the beginning of the year was always Muharram. What changed was the beginning of our calendar starts with the Hijrah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the reason they decided to continue with Muharram as the first month was because that was the month that Rasulullah started sending his companions from Makkah to Medina. But, you know, if you look at the various months, Muharram, Safar, Rajab, all of these months, Ramadan, all of them historically, you know, within Arabia had some significance. Whether it was some religious or historical events, but they had significance. They had something that stood out at, in that month. With the exception of Rabiul Awud. This was the only month that really had no distinction among the Arabs until the birth of Rasulullah <laughs> and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept this month reserved for the coming of his beloved <laughs> you know because again if you look at Muharram you know the 10th of Muharram so many things happened you know the freedom the Jews uh, and Musa al-Islam along with the children of Israel were freed from Pharaoh mm -hmm. you know various you know, uh, uh, Yunus al-Islam was uh, delivered from the belly of the fish. You know, and so many, many, many other things. You know, Zil Hajj, you know, the Hajj, uh, which is so significant. And all of these other months. But, but Rabbi al-Awwal had absolutely nothing until the coming of Rasulullah. And it's important to understand, and this is something that we forget, you know, there is nothing that happens by coincidence. Everything has a purpose. Not even a leaf falls from a tree without the command of Allah. Nothing happens without the will of Allah. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willed that this month of Rabbi Lawal should have nothing dis that distinguishes it 
until the coming of his beloved. So he reserved this month for Rasulullah. <laughs> and when we look at the birth of Rasulullah, you know, two things are agreed upon. That it was Monday, you know, so the day is agreed upon. And it was the month of Rabiul Awal. The date is not agreed upon. The day is agreed upon because of the hadith in Say Muslim. That where Abu Qatada Radiyallahu narrates that when Rasulullah asked why he fasted every Monday. You know, they understood Thursday because Thursday has other distinctions. But why Monday? Because again, just like Rabbi Al-Awwal had no distinction before the coming of Rasulullah so Sallam, Monday also in the days of the month, you know, no real distinction. So why do you fast Monday? And what did he say? He said, because it was the day that I was born and the day that the first revelation came to me or was sent down upon me. So if his birth had no, no value, if it had no distinction, it was not, if it, you know, was not significant, then why does he mention it? He could have simply said that, oh, this was the day that the first revelation came to me. But he did not. He said that this is the day I was born, and this is the day that the revelation came to me. So, so he, he distinguishes two things from it. But the first he mentions is his own birth. If you look at the month of Rabiul Awal, coming back to that, you know, Rabi in Arabic means spring. Awal, of course, means first. Because after Rabiul Awal, there's Rabi Thani, the second, the Rabi, or the second spring. So when they named the months, it was spring at that month. But this is also something interesting. Because if you look at spring itself, you know, you have the four seasons, of course, you know, summer, fall, winter, and then spring. So, so spring comes after winter. What happens in fall? In fall, everything starts to die. You know, you look out, the leaves are falling, everything's going dormant. And in winter, it's like everything is dead. No leaves on the trees. Everything is literally hibernating. You know, it's like, it's like the whole world has gone into a coma. But then spring comes, and now you see everything coming back to life. And the other interesting thing about spring is not only things are coming back to life, but the temperature changes where it's very comfortable. <coughs> it's not too cold. It's not too hot. You know, everything, you know, turns green. The flowers are blooming. Everything is coming. You know, again, the whole world, it's like everything is waking up again. Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we know he was born on Monday. We know that he was born in Rabiul and we know that he was born at the time of dawn. So also, why dawn? You know, again, nothing happens by coincidence. So when Allah SWT sent his beloved, he sent him at a specific time. Dawn, you know, when you can start see, distinguishing the white thread of the horizon from the black thread of the horizon. Everything that was covered by the darkness of the night is now coming to light. So now you, everything becomes, starts to become distinguishable. So when we look at the coming of Rasulullah, he, his coming represents life itself. There is no life without him. And Allah SWT mentions this in the Qur'an when he talks about the disbelievers and he says that they are dead. I mean, you, I mean, you, 
look at them, they're breathing. Their heart is pumping. You know, they're moving. So, you know, from a superficial standpoint, oh, they're alive. But Allah says, no, they are dead. Why? Because they have denied Rasulullah. So his coming is a chance for us to become alive. It is life of the he is the life of the universe. Just like spring, you know, it brings the things back to life. So Rasulullah he's born in the first month of spring in Rabbiul Awal, where everything now he's bringing things back to life. He's born at dawn, so now we start seeing things more clearly. He starts distinguishing the falsehood from the truth. Because he himself is the truth. So those who can now see him, they in reality have seen the truth. The date, you know, as I mentioned, is questioned. Whether he was born on, you know, there are some who say he was born on the 8th. Some say that he was born on the 9th. Some say that it was the 12th. Some say that it was the 21st. Some say it was the 19th. If you calculate it, most scholars, from a calculation standpoint, going back and knowing that it's Monday, knowing that you know, all these other things. They say it was more than likely the ninth. But most of us celebrate it as the twelfth. But Allah Subhanahu did not distinguish or did not let us know specifically which one. So there are those who say, oh, see, if there was any significance to his birth, then we would know the exact date. Allah Subhanahu would have allowed us to know the exact date. And when you hear these people, you automatically know that they have nothing to do with the Qur'an. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an, He says what? We read this surah commonly, and when Ramadan comes, we read it even more. He says, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ إِنَّ عَنْزَلْنَاهُ فِي لَيْلَةِ الْقَدْرِ That truly we reveal this on the night of power. The Qur'an on the night of power. And what will explain to you what this night is? Laylatul Qadr khayrun min al That this night is better than a thousand months. You know, if you worshipped a thousand months, worshipping that one night is better than those thousand months. And he doesn't say how much better. He just says it's better. So now if I ask somebody, okay, now tell me, when is Laylatul Qadr? So you can tell me, well, it's in Ramadan. Okay, fine. When in Ramadan? So, well, more than likely the last 10 days of Ramadan. And here also, you have to say more than likely. You can't say just with a definitive that, yeah, it's in the last. You have to more than likely it's in the last 10 days of Ramadan. Okay, fine. I accept, okay, it's in the last 10 days. What, which day? And then you have to say, well, probably in one of the odd nights of the last 10 days. Okay, fine. Which one of the odd nights? You say, well, I can't say. But we celebrate it on the 27th. But we're not sure that's really it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, He talks about such a distinguished night. And yet he doesn't let us know which night it is. And there's so much wisdom in this too. Just like everything Allah subhanahu wa does, there's so much wisdom in it. Because if we knew exactly which night it was, and everybody would worship that night and leave all the other nights. And he says, you don't need to know, just look for it. You know, just like a treasure, what do you do with a treasure? You hide it. <coughs> and if there's a hidden treasure, who's going to find it? The seeker. The one who seeks it out. 
the one who has some connection with it. So the same way with the with the day of the birth of, of the coming of Rasulullah. It's hidden. So he's given us the whole month to celebrate his coming. Those who seek it out. But for those who seek it out, they also they're 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 joyful at his coming all the time. There is no greater blessing than the blessing of Rasulullah Sallallahu himself. That the Creator sent His own Beloved to the creation. Since we're talking about the celebration, celebration or celebrating the coming of Rasulullah I'm going to get back to some of the other distinctions directly connected and specifically connected to Rasulullah's birth itself. But if, again, when we look in the Quran, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the births of various prophets. He celebrates their coming <coughs> by mentioning them and then making us repeat it over and over and learn about it and know it. He talks about the birth of Ibrahim He talks about the birth of Musa He talks about the birth of Yahya He talks about the birth of Isa And for Yahya what does he say? In Surah Maryam, Surah number 19, verse number 15, <clears throat> what does he say? He said, وَسَلَامٌ عَلَيْهِ يَوْمَ وُلِدَ وَيَوْمَ يَمُوتُ وَيَوْمَ يُبْعَثُ حَيَّ Peace be upon him. The day that he was born, the day that he dies, and the day that he will be raised up again. And Isa a.s. for himself, Isa a.s. in the Quran, he says, Allah subhanahu wa quotes him as saying, وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيَّ يَوْمَ وُلِدْتُ وَيَوْمَ أَمُوتُ وَيَوْمَ أُبَثُ حَيَّ Peace be upon me, the day that I, that I was born. And peace be upon me, the day that I was born, the day that I die, and the day that I will be raised up. Again. So for the prophets, it's always peace. There's always salam. And what do we do when we celebrate the coming of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? We talk about him. We sing his praises. And then we do the salam. We send salutations upon him. You know, just like we do every Friday here after Juma. Because for the prophets, it's always salam. And so, for the so, if that is the situation for Isa al Islam and Yahya al Islam and all the other prophets, then what about the condition of the master of all of the prophets, Rasulullah Sallallahu Sayyidul Anbiya? Muhammad 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 then we'll throw out a few things today and then we'll talk more about them in the coming weeks, inshallah. Uh, because there are people who say, oh, you know, this was the day that he passed. You know, if you look at the 12th of Rabiul Awal, it's very distinctly mentioned in Sayyid Bukhari that that's the day that he passed. So they say, oh, you know, why are you celebrating this day? That's the day he, he passed. What does Allah say about the prophets? Peace, the day they were born, the day that they pass, and the day that they are raised up again. Salam. Always salam. Hmm? You know, for a shuhada, those who are martyred in the way of Allah. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? You know, in Surah Baqarah, He says, وَلَا تَقُولُوا مَنْ يُقْتِلُ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاتِ بَلْ أَحْيَانْ وَلَكِلَّ تَشْعُرُونَ 
that do not say about those who are slain in the way of Allah that they are dead. If he stopped here, then okay, fine. We don't say he's dead, but maybe we say something else. But then he tells us what to say. He says, Bal ahya, they are alive. But you cannot comprehend it. Their life is such, you know, they appear to be dead, but they are more li alive than you are alive. This is beyond your comprehension. And then in Surah Ali Imran, he says, "Wala tahsaban al-ladina qutlu fi sabil Allah yamwad, bal ahyan wala wal ahyan in the Rabbihim yurzaqoon." That do not say, do not even think. First he said, don't say. Now he says, don't even think that those who are slain in the way of Allah are dead. For they are alive and they receive their sustenance. Not only are they alive, but they are receiving their sustenance. So this is shuhada. And above the shuhada, according to the Quran, are the Siddiqeen. So if the shuhada are alive, then what can I say about the Siddiq? And above the Siddiq are the Anbiya, the Prophets. And above all of the Prophets is who? Sayyidul Anbiya, the Master of the Prophets, Rasulullah. See, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an, He doesn't say that you, every nafs will die. He says, Kullu nafsin dhaikatul maut. Every nafs will taste death. You know, there's a difference in tasting something and eating something. You know, when you taste something, it's just, you know, just touch it to your tongue and just a second and that's it. You eat it, it's got to go through the whole process. But there is a big, big distinction between the shuhada and the Rasulullah so so, as far as being alive as well. You know, the shuhada, they are alive because Allah says they are alive. So they are, in reality, they are alive. Legally, they are dead. From an Islamic perspective, in reality the shohada are alive, but legally they are dead. Why? Because when someone becomes martyred in the battlefield, you know, we don't even think he's dead. He's alive because Allah says so, period. Mm -hmm. But his wife now becomes a widow, and after completing the period can marry somebody else. His wealth is distributed among, amongst his heirs. So legally he's dead. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. In reality, he is alive, and legally, he is alive. Why? Because again, he is in beyond the shuhada. The shuhada did not become shuhada except because of him. But what does Allah subhanahu wa taala say about the wives of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam? They cannot marry after him. Because why? Because he's alive, legally. What about the what about the the property and the wealth of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? What happened? No one inherited it because he has no heirs. His daughter, his 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 grandsons, none of them inherited his property. It became waqt for the Muslims because again. You could only distribute it if legally he was dead. But legally he's not dead. He's alive. So this is a big distinction where Allah SWT Himself is showing us. But if we choose to ignore it, then that's our own problem. Now coming back to the birth of Rasulullah himself. His own mother, 
Bibi Amin salamu alayha. She said that she never knew that she had, she had conceived except that her period stopped. She never experienced any pain or difficulty like normal women experience when they, when they are pregnant. Nor did she gain any weight. The only way she knew that she, she was expecting was that her period stopped. That was it. She didn't gain any weight and she did not have any pain or difficulty. And part of this, you know, there, there are many reasons for this, but one of the reasons which I'll talk, mention just today is that Rasulullah is Rahmatul al Alameen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't say that I made you a mercy to all of creation. He says, I sent you as a mercy to all of creation. And there are many aspects of this as well. So it wasn't like when he declares his prophethood that now he suddenly he's a mercy to all of creation. He is that mercy from his creation. For from the moment he is created, he is a mercy for all of creation. So if, if he is a mercy to all of creation, then how can he be a burden to his mother? mother? So, so when she is carrying him, in reality he is carrying her. But from, just say from a medical standpoint, when she's carrying him, she f experiences no difficulties because of his mercy. And she says, and this is why also she didn't gain any weight. She says that when he was born, it was a light that came forth from me. This nur came forth from me, through which I could see the palaces of Qaisar in Rome. Very quickly, and we're going to talk about more of this next week, inshallah. We've got two minutes. One is, she didn't gain any weight because light has no weight. You know, if I do, you know, there's light in the room. If I do this, you know, there's no weight. Allah subhanahu wa sent him as the light. So Nur has no weight, so she didn't gain any weight. But if you look at the curvature of the earth, after 35 miles, the curve, because of the curve, even if you're at, in an area where it's totally flat, after 35 miles you can't see beyond, that is the horizon. Because the curvature comes to an extent now you can't see. Unless something's extremely tall, then you can see it. But if you look between Mecca and Rome, or the Roman Byzantine Empire, mountains, more than 35 miles, thousands of miles, and yet she's seeing all of this. So what type of light is this that her vision can now penetrate through all of this and see what is there? This is the nur of Rasulullah. <laughs> through which now she everything becomes clear to her. Time is up, inshallah, we'll continue next week. Uh, some things I'll mention after, after Juma, uh, inshallah, uh, and probably also at, draw on those aspects next week as well, inshallah. Uh, you know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fill our hearts with the love of Rasulullah sallallahu with his own, with Allah's own love and the love of Rasulullah sallallahu and these two loves are not distinct. You cannot love one without loving the other, period. This is the way Allah has created His beloved. Mm -hmm. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.
And may he fill our hearts with the love of the family of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi as well as his companions and all of those whom they love, inshallah. Those who have not made sunnah, go and make sunnah, inshallah.